Wherever you are in the world, welcome to another edition of Jerry's Take on China. Of course, I'm Jerry. My last few videos have been quite political. Today, I'm going to be a little bit less so. What I'm trying to do with this channel is to prove the things that Westerners are seeing and reading about China are pretty much completely misunderstood. A recent trip that I took gave me the opportunity to kind of do just that. I don't consider myself a journalist. I don't feel like I'm an influencer. And in, until someone recently called me one, I didn't even know what a KOL was. It's a key opinion leader. I very much doubt I'm one of those two. So I was both surprised and a little honored when I was recently asked by some friends of mine at GD Today, which is an English language media outlet that I've written for in the past, they asked me to participate in a Greater Bay Area Bridges Discovery Tour. This was a social media influence, influencers trip to four different Greater Bay Areas, Shenzhen, Zhuhai, Qingyuan, and Guangzhou. I was interested when they told me we'd be looking at some high-tech companies. I was positively excited when they described the poverty alleviation and rural revitalization locations that we would visit. So, joining 15 real influencers on this trip, I found myself surrounded by people with huge audiences, great equipment, fantastic social media skills. It was a bit of a learning curve for me, quite a steep one too. I'll be honest, I'm not a great fan of high tech. I did embrace computers, I embraced the internet and mobile phones when they were new, but I could easily live in the past when those mobile phones were used to make calls, send text messages, nothing more. I often feel that I'm being dragged into a future that makes life a lot easier for some, more interesting for some, but a lot more complex and frightening for others. So what I saw when our group visited the headquarters of the BYD company in Shenzhen, this made me sit up and take notice. This is a company that started as a maker of batteries in 1995. They still make batteries, but they've innovated so much that they've actually morphed into, among other things, the largest electric vehicle manufacturer in the world. And boy, do they make some nice cars. In the same city, we visited the birthplace of the affordable 360 de degree camera, the Insta360. And this was a place I really was interested in seeing because I've got one of their products. The problem is, I don't know how to use it properly. And I've had a lot of trouble attaching it to my bike because it's a little heavy for the bracket. They answered a lot of my questions, gave me some solutions, and impress me enormously with their products. One of which, believe it or not, has gone to Mars. In a highly unlikely but true story, NASA won an Emmy for their live streaming program with a 360 degree camera. Who would have known that a seven year old Chinese startup company could send a product to Mars and help NASA win an Emmy? Certainly not me. I've also always been fascinated by the way that China and Hong Kong interact with each other and how the 1997 handover would play out over time. Most of us, especially when we read Western media, we hold the view that China isn't good for the special administrative regions, the SARs. But the truth is very much different. Shenzhen has a place called Chenhai. It's been set up as a deep cooperation zone and although it's on the mainland, it's attracting thousands of people from Hong Kong, especially people with great ideas, great education. China's investing hugely in these people and encouraging them to live, work, even study, bring their families and make a life there. The regulations in that area are hybrid. They aren't fully Chinese, they aren't fully Hong Kong. They're a true assimilation of the best of both and there are professionals in law, medicine, accountancy, and other professions that are being certified to operate in both regions. 
Guangzhou, Nansha, and Zhuhai's Hanjing have the same kinds of interoperable regulations, and we visit all three of them. What it means is very simple. Those people who are afraid that China is going to take over Hong Kong or Macau, you've got it all wrong. Young, upcoming professionals from the SARs are creating wealth, a better economy, and making great strides in both health and education to the benefit of Hong Kong, Macau, and the greater Bay Area. China isn't taking over Hong Kong or Macau. The SARs look like they're taking over China, or at least a very large slice of the greater Bay Area. Getting out of the big cities is always great. One of the things people assume about Guangdong is that it's a place full of factories, full of pollution, millions of migrant workers. And while parts of this are true, it certainly isn't the whole truth. Even in cities like Guangzhou, it's still very easy to find small farms, rural villages, as well as a huge natural wetland with one park with more than 100,000 migratory birds, including some very rare species making their home there in the appropriate season. When you get as far north as Qingyuan, you're still in Guangdong, but it's more likely you'll be traveling through mountains and rice fields, you'll be seeing rural villages, yet such is the infrastructure of the region you're still only an hour or so away from the center of Guangzhou or 90 minutes from Shenzhen. High-speed rail, wide freeways, these things are connecting everything in the great, Greater Bay Area. And everything else is connected to everything else within a couple of hours. And what's really important though is that even these rural industries, and we visited a fish farm and a rice plantation, are getting the benefit of China's high tech. These fish farms are organic. The one we saw sells frozen pre-prepared fish. And that's something China's only recently adopting. Unlike the West where pre-prepared microwave meals are the norm for many people, here in China people want their food to be as fresh as possible. But they realize the wet markets aren't as accessible in some of the cities or even expat Chinese find that the fish they love isn't available in their adopted homes. They can buy direct from the farm online. Each product has a QR code. The user can scan the code, find the origin of their fish, all the information about when it was born, how it was fed, where it was caught, prepared, packaged and sold. They can even link to a video to watch as their batch of fish were prepared for fast freezing and delivery. Pretty impressive. Land management is very important. The rice fields utilize original methods of fertilization. They allow the fields to be fish farms as well as rice fields. The fish do their job of both eating the waterborne bugs and fertilizing the ground underneath them. Insects are dealt with by adding ducks or turkeys to the fields as the rice starts to mature. They also help with fertilization, of course, and they manage to eat almost all the pests that could damage the rice. Around the fields, you can see solar-powered cameras, other measuring equipment to manage water flow and environmental conditions, and they all report back to a central control point. So if anything needs adjusting, it can be done easily and remotely. The processing and packaging of the rice is fully automated, ensuring fresh, good quality, delicious local rice, along with a crop of fish and another of duck. In other words, the high tech that I was so averse to is now part and parcel of everyday life, even for a rice farmer in Guangdong. So moving to poverty alleviation, this is a topic that's very near and dear to me. Qingyuan is the home to a thousand year old Yao minority village. And I'm aware that there've been incredible changes in China. I've been lucky enough to witness them firsthand. But this trip to this village really piqued my interest. Much more so, as we were arriving, we were climbing up a mountain on a relatively new road and I realized the place was familiar. I'd visited there 
about 10 or 12 years before. On that occasion, we slithered up a mud road into a land that time had definitely forgotten. But here we were, cruising up a mountain road, 60 kilometers an hour, before we entered a car park with a shopping center and tourists there to buy their locally handmade products. There was a never-ending stone staircase that led us through a village. It had coffee shops, restaurants, even bed and breakfast hotels, where before we'd seen nothing poverty. Poverty surrounded by nature's beauty, though. Guangdong constantly surprises. It is one of the world's biggest industrial hubs, but at the same time, it's a region steeped in history and nature, and where that nature meets high tech to complement the organic farming methods. It's a place where ethnic minorities are encouraged to use their culture and their differences to promote their diversity, and a place where, if you're lucky enough, you can see all of this and more, I haven't finished with everything, in a few days. And thanks to GD Today, which is part of the Nanfang Media Group and their supporters, I got to be that lucky. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope, like me, you were able to learn something about the Greater Bay Area. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll do everything I can to answer them. And when I say I haven't finished the, this yet, there was one aspect that I really do want to go into, and that's visiting a traditional Chinese medicine factory or production center in Zhuhai, which was part of Macau. So we'll be talking about that in a future video, not far down the track. Looking forward to seeing you there. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.